All right, everybody. What do we got? Ah, Tesla. What's up? Meme, thank you for showing up. You and your husband today. We did a, uh, oh, it's so fun. So every Sunday, uh, Sunday fun day, we go to um, Amigos de los Animales and we walk the shelter dogs because, you know, it's important that they get out, right? And uh, Meme and her husband showed up and uh, I appreciate it. So and we've had other people there before, but every Sunday, and I, it seemed like if I don't announce it, we, I kind of, people forget about it, but here we were. It's pretty cool because you get like, it's like uh, like a couple mile walk. And then we go into the into the ocean for the dogs. There they are. There's moose. And this gigantic monster right here is Zeus. And then a couple of dogs over here and they're all over the place. But yeah, thank you, meme. And of course, all the people that showed up beforehand. Appreciate you. Fun times. Yeah. Robbie says, did you sell your dome? Funny story about Everdome. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Uh, I haven't sold any. I wish I would have. <laughs> I wish I would have. <laughs> and that's about it. So, yeah. No, I still have all my, my Everdome. I sold some of my... Um, uh, against Okishi. I sold some of that along the way, but I'm in a lockup period and I haven't sold one of my sweat coins yet. It's because I'm on a year long lockup. That's why. So yeah, tiger, it's uh, super warm here in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Moose is a big, big dog. This is a great question. The Rossaconian. Rob, how do you differentiate what you want to happen versus what you think will happen? I want a recession too and can't help but listen and agree to those who call for it. Me too. And it's, it's the same thing that like uh, I've learned along the way that most of the time, most, most of the time people are just, the herd is wrong. Uh, I can't say like that. We'll just say sometimes the herd is wrong. And so like when we're so sure that things are going to happen, like remember when everybody was calling for Bitcoin, like I said, 150K, 250K, half a million dollars. Ethereum was the next great thing, you know, 10,000, 20,000. And we knew it was, and we knew that's what it was. And then it was like this double top happened. We're like, oh, that's it. That's the whole bull run. And that's it. So for me, what I look at is like this. I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. So if I have to, the mistake that I would make is waiting for the recession to happen and Bitcoin to go to like Gareth Soloway and, and uh, Paul Tudor Jones and, and all the rest of the, of the uh, financial forecasters. And they think that, you know, like Bitcoin to go to 12K or 10K. Some people say it's going to go to like $3,800 and they're so sure about it. And I'm like, I don't think you're right, but I mean, whatever. 12K I could see, 10K I could see. So what I do is I just keep buying, dollar cost averaging. If there's one thing that I'm pretty sure on, and I'm a, actually I'm 100% sure on this one, is that bull runs don't last forever, neither do bear markets. So if I just dollar cost average my regular amount and I just buy the same thing and, and uh, just sit around here for the long haul and don't get too cute with it, uh, at some point, prices will go up and uh, I will probably be in the money. So again, if the recession comes in, great, great. Because then like, you know, that X amount of dollars I pay every day for Bitcoin, I'll get to buy more Bitcoin and more Ethereum and more Near and more Chainlink and more Cardano and more Avalanche and all the stuff that I, I buy every day or every week. I just get more of that. The recession doesn't come. Well, guess what? I didn't sit on my hands and go, well, I'm hoping this recession comes because of da 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 I've been dollar cost averaging. So to me, I temper expectations with just trying to be disciplined and sit around here for the long haul. That's as, that's as simple as I can get. That's it. All right. <laughs> Harry Dent. Oh, I can't wait to meet that guy. The perma bear. The perma bear for what it is. 
Uh, Dennis says, is the bottom in? I don't know. I never thought the bottom was in when uh, everybody called for it in June. But, I mean, I don't think the bottom is in yet. I still don't. But a lot of people are pretty sure that it is. Those same people were sure it was the bottom was in in June. So who knows? The try. Oh, I didn't know this. Coinbase KYC questions have become absurdly invasive. Where do you work? How much do you plan on investing? I'm done with them. Yeah. Did you know? I, I just learned this on a stream. That you can use your credit card now to, I think this has been for a while. I just didn't realize it. You can use your credit card or debit card. I think it's credit card. Now you can use your cards, MasterCard, Visa, whatever is backed by, and pay for crypto using Uniswap. So you don't have to go through it. The only problem is you got to use MoonPay, and that's like 5% transaction fees. So some people get really ticked off on transaction fees. But I will remind you of one thing. You know who had some super low transaction fees? I mean, super low, super, super. FTX it was like 0.25%. But in reality, it was 100%. So just remember that. Yes, Mr. Wolf. Sweat is launching in September in the U.S. I'd like to get uh, Oligon, uh, uh, CMO or C CEO of, of Sweatcoin, and I want to talk to him like how he's going to pull that off. Because if Gary Gensler is out there saying everything's a, a security, how are they going to do that? I'm curious. But they're going, they're going ahead with it. They're like, yep, September 2022. We're going to make all those, where's my phone? All these sweat coins that we've been accumulating and just having in our app, that we're going to be able to use that supposedly in September and transfer that to a centralized exchange if you want to and cash out. So all that walking you're doing, which I don't know why you don't have the app right now. Anyhow, it's free. There's a link in the description. It's very simple. And uh, if you beat me in the steps, I pay you 50 sweat coin every single month. Top 10. Which I will remind everybody, uh, only four people beat me this month or last month. So good luck. <sighs> okay, the catacombs says, hey, Rob, hope you're having a great day. How is Puerto Rico? And I haven't spent a while. I'm looking at buying some property around Utuado. I don't know where that is. I would love to see an updated video on Puerto Rico. Here's what you got to know. It's a great place. Food, eh. And uh, <clears throat> stop signs and stop lights are suggestions. And uh, the prices for houses are still pretty high. Condo is still pretty high. Uh, Multi-unit apartments, still pretty high. So just be aware of that. But, I mean, there's a lot of things. I did it, if you... Google Digital Asset News Puerto Rico. You'll see my last video I did, which was, uh, I think I did it like six months ago. And uh, that's, as, that's as updated as you really need to be. Grid's looking good. Thank you. I tend to feel like I look like old man winter, but I will take it. I will take any compliment. Bazo says, uh, is BUSD in trouble? Yeah, probably. I mean... Uh, the Binance stablecoin, I mean, it's going to go away. Unless Paxos does what I think they should do, which is sue the uh, SEC. And when people talk about like, ah, well, the SEC, you know, how will we go against that? We'll never win. Mark Cuban beat him. And he's just a guy. He's just a guy who owns a massive couple companies. So it can be done. Hi from New Zealand. How's your dog walk? It was great. <laughs> Yeah, I'm always in family node. Art of sports. You know, it's a great question. Why is the true inflation number always lower than the Fed's CPI number? If you do a, a search of digital asset news, true inflation, uh, I have the CEO on, and he explains exactly why it is. So check that out. All right, what did I miss? Oh. Oh, this is interesting. I did not know this. This is why I like the chats. Gensel needs to be asked about his chat with Tim Draper before being with the SEC. He predicted Gensler's screwed up policy to a T. <laughs> Go see it as a title screen. Oh, okay. So everybody check that out. Tim Draper, which Tim Draper is still under the assumption. Correct me if I'm wrong. He still thinks that Bitcoin is going to reach 250000 this year, June. 
Tim Draper doesn't care. Tim Draper's a multi-billionaire. He's like, eh, get that one wrong, whatever. I'm going to take my yacht out now. Mm, yeah, recession. Well, it depends on the industry just how deep the recession will be. Very true. Yeah, temper expectations, man. Every time you think this is going to be the, the, the big one, it never is. And it's always like the one projects that you just are like languishing that you're like, ah, throw some money in there. Those are the ones that make it. There's a good term for all the things that uh, like VCs do and speculators do. It's called uh, spray and pray, which is just you just start buying a bunch of stuff and going, well, I hope this works. That's essentially what most of us are doing. Thank you, Marlon. We do need regulations. No one believes me. They're going to come anyhow. When are you going to have Simon U back? Simon's always welcome on the show. He's too busy gambling and playing poker. I don't know. <laughs> Beardy, Beardy is out walking to earn some sweat. Beardy said on Twitter, he said, uh, talking about the, the sweat coin challenge, he said, yeah, I guess. He goes, I got 3.5 steps today. And I told him, I said, Beardy, Falling down off your couch is not steps. And it's still true. Uh, no worry. Bank of America. Nathan O says, I'll beat you. Okay. Okay. It's on. Nathan, download that app. See you next month. And Schlanman <laughs> says, is the plan still to dynamic DCA? Yes. And you know what? Uh, let's see here. Let me, all right, it is. And there's this thing, there's a link in the description for Ben's, for Ben's, uh, website. And there's a, there's a free tier. I think, I don't think you can get this part, but where'd it go? Okay. Crypto risk. Historical risk levels. Nah, time and risk bands. Okay, this is what it is. So the time and risk bands, you always take a look at this. And this is, if you look at, there's a link in the description and actually all the videos that I do, it says why and when I'm selling 80% of my crypto. And there's the video. I put that in there because I think we all know how to buy things, right? I think we're all good at that, buying dips and such. Yeah, but we're really bad at selling, let's be honest. So I put that in there. And one of those things we take a look at is the time and wristbands. And I use a bunch of different indicators now. So if we're gonna do dynamic DCA, I will just say it like this. Like right now, Bitcoin is currently in the 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 risk band, which is right here. Because it's all it, this is the most it's always been. Out of the entire existence of Bitcoin, it's been there 1,000 plus days. Got it? Cool. It says makes sense, right? Of, of the levels. So when it starts to get risky, meaning when the price starts to plummet, it starts to go into this direction. Well, 0 0.2 to 0 0.3, 848 days. So and I'm not telling what, what to do, but for me, when it, when it comes from here down to here, I increase my buys by 10%. And then from 0 0.2 to 0 0.3, if it goes down to this one, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, now I increase it by 25%. And if it goes here, if it goes to the 0 0.0 to 0 0.1, I increase it massively. I'm not even going to tell you the percentage because it's ridiculous. On the other hand, as we start to go this way, we start to get these super ridiculous levels over here. This is what I'm looking at selling because there's very few days and the price is overheated and that's all I need to know. So good question. The plan is yes to still dynamic DCA. <laughs> Sorb just says wrong. Yeah. Hello, Matt. Uh, damn video game shooters. When Lambo, it's a great question. Me personally, I just, uh, I'm more of a minivan person. Great gas mileage, a lot, of, a lot of room. And I always tell my, I always tell my wife, if you ever leave me and I have a, a, a minivan, I'll be able to, to get with somebody else pretty quickly because I'll have a minivan. 
when moon for eos is that a crypto pro i didn't i don't know if that's even it's still still verity What's these random dumps out of nowhere? Yeah, didn't we see that Bitcoin dropped about a thousand thirty dollars or so in thirty minutes? So, well, some people will say, well, it's all about Silvergate and the, the bank itself, and they're pretty much. I think they're insolvent already, and some and some people will point to other different factors. I just think it's just whales who are selling and using these these events to point to. Yes, yeah, it's over. It's that thing. It's not us. As we're dump on everybody. That's how I go at it. <laughs> yeah, Ricky. I mean, whenever you make it, every Sunday. EOS moved in 2018, Beardy. You know what? Thanks, Beardy. Uh, I still own some EOS, so I shouldn't. I would like it to go up, but I don't think it's. But who knows? What do I know? Like, I thought Tazos was dead. And Tezos just got picked up by the California DMV. On top of that, Google uh, picked up Tezos, uh, I think, uh, for one of its node operators, something like that. Uh, there's a video I did on it uh, a couple of days ago, a couple, about a week ago or so. So, you know, things come back from the dead every so often. All right, Tesla, see you. When Dodge Hellcat, that'd be a pretty good one too. Yeah, yes, yes. Regulation is customer. If let's say the they they come out and they go, this is what we, this is what we think uh, these exchanges because I think that the SEC is going to regulate the centralized exchanges first because that's what they can wrap their head around. That's what they can attack and get and do. And if they can stop the coal mingling of funds and get I don't know a proof of reserves and proof of liabilities and independent audits. I'm okay with that. Is anybody out? Is it? Do, does anybody disagree with that? That we should not have the centralized exchange commingle our funds. That we should have some kind of proof of reserves and liabilities and some kind of audit that would actually say that they have what they have. Did you know that FTX was supposed to have over a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin and they end up having only like 1.2 million worth of it? They just didn't buy it, but they took your money. So like, do we think that that's not, that's not a bad idea to put that in place for centralized exchanges? I'm just curious. I don't know. Ah, Akwana Zazanzi says, Rob, you got this channel, your DGN channel. How about a trading channel? I think that would be great. It would be great entertainment as everybody laughs at me because I am not a trader. So that's out of my wheelhouse, unfortunately. But I do think that guy over at Coin Bureau is going to start his uh, a third channel doing trading. Crazy. So yeah, not me, man. I, I will bow out of that. And if you're looking for a good trading channel, just go watch Tom Crown. Seems to know what he's doing. Uh, let's see. Uh, So this one is, have you seen Coinbase's crypto advocacy page? I have taken a look at it quickly. It looks pretty good. And let me see, let me pull it up. What it is. Let's see. Da -da -da -da. No, no thanks. I got to go through this nonsense yeah. here. So what it is, is people in the United States, they can write to their specific representatives. And time to advance procreative policy in all four of their congressional districts. And you can do this here. I'll just do this. Coinbase, act now. And I'll save that, and then I'll put this into the comment. So you guys can do this. And what it really comes down to is they want you to, you know, to send out information to the policymakers that are in your district, wherever you live in whatever state, only for Americans, right? 
and just to tell them like, Hey, this is my experience. This is what I, what I've done. This is how I feel about it. And then they, they give you templates also and how to find your representative, because I'll be honest with you. Most people don't know who it is. Uh, not everybody, but most. So that's something to look into. It's a good, it's a step in the right direction. I showed you actually on the video that we talked about. Uh, the one where I said to sue the SEC, same thing. There's a, there was a link, help me spread the word on suing the, the SEC, and I showed you how to look up your representative and contact them directly. But, I mean, it might be easier just to do the Coinbase way. Yeah, and Meme says we don't, we don't really have a rep, and we can't vote anyhow. That's true. I can't vote. Oh, Ricky, my Tom Emmer is my guy. Well, that's easy. Tom Emmer is very, very big on, on crypto, that's for sure. <laughs> Tom Crown's getting in between poker games and smoking the 420. <laughs> uh, how about a dog walking channel? I should just do a live stream of us dog walking the dogs. Let's see. Here we go. Quit time says bought at the peak, still waiting for the bull cycle, just like recession, still waiting. Life is a waiting game. If you have time, you're usually going to win. But uh, yeah, I think most of us here are the same way. We all got in. Most of us, is anybody here who got in during the bear market and said, you know what, I really want to buy this, this awful bear market? Or did everybody get in towards the peak of a bull market? Me personally, 2017. I think a lot of you, uh, 2021. And then there's some people who are like 2013, but you know, those are the real, real OGs. So yeah, eh, just hang around. Good things happen to those who wait. Okay. And Emery Pettis says, will FTX get the 450 million from Voyager? Rumor is 78% back to customers. Emery, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Uh, that is what they said but now it's looking like well it's, it's not looking too great because it's looking like those numbers are a little bit off and it might be 50 percent. but wait it gets worse uh the government stepped in on the last hearing and said that they didn't want this deal to go through with binance us and voyager because they felt that the vgx token was a security and the judge said, I can't believe you guys are even here. And the judge really said this. We talked about this in the last video four or five days ago. He says, I can't believe you guys are here saying that, disrupting this, this whole hearing because we're moving forward. And now you want to step in and you haven't even given anybody clarity about what this is exactly what he said or paraphrase. And you want me to stop this whole, these whole proceedings because you guys think this might be something that you haven't given clear guidance on? Why would I do that? And then the SEC counsel said something and they went back and forth and blah, blah, blah. So uh, this might be a negative for Binance to go, wow, if we get into this and we buy that, now we have securities in America, which could open the door for America, the SEC to investigate us and Binance US. And it's, it's bad. I just have to tell you. So... Maybe it'll go through. We're going to see. It happen. I want to say it happens tomorrow if uh, it's for the ruling. So I don't know. I hope so. I like to put this behind us. I like to put this behind us and Celsius behind us. I know some people don't like it, but like I'm just like, just liquidate it. And then some people say, Rob, how can you say to liquidate for all these things that are happening in Celsius because they're talking about clawbacks. And, every, and even if you, you know, if you liquidate, they're definitely going to claw back. Seems like it doesn't matter to them. Seems like they're talking about retail, retail, not insider clawbacks, just regular retail clawbacks already without a chapter seven liquidation. So I'm like, what's the difference? At least with liquidation, I get this nonsense over with and I'm gonna deal with Nova Wolf and their nonsense that they think they're gonna pull out some awesome company, which I doubt very much. I'm a much nicer person in the bull run. It's true. And Emery does say a good point. Judge is on the Voyager side, wasn't it? That is true. See, silver lining. <laughs> Igor says, Rob, do you stand to lose anything in either the Voyager or Celsius clawbacks? No, I won't lose anything. 
I've already lost it because I never took it off. So the day that I did that video, I, I shouldn't say like that. The day that I did the, the video of Celsius going, I just got back from consensus. There's something going on. Link's description. You should probably pull your funds out. I did that 11 a.m., that video. And then around 12, I started to get around to it. But I'm like, oh, I got some time. So I did a test transaction for Bitcoin. And it took a long time to get, it took like two or three hours. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I just did like 0 0.10 of Bitcoin. And then the next transaction to take all my Bitcoin off didn't go through. So I have over six figures sitting on Celsius. And we've talked about this many times because it's uh, public knowledge. For some reason, the judge thought it was a great idea to dox everybody and tell us how much was on there. So now you know. So six figures on there. And with Voyager, at least we had two weeks. But I kept a large amount of my VGX tokens on there, which I was a believer in the VGX token. And uh, that's five figures plus some Bitcoin and some Ethereum and some other stuff that I did take some off, but not as much as I should have. And that's that. So they're not going to claw anything back because they got already it all on there. I just chalk it up to it's probably gone anyhow. And that's it. So. Oh, Rusty Bot says, Rob, do you remember when I joined? October November 20? Okay. I have now DCA my average down much. So I'm in, hey, look at that. See, I'm in profit. DCA just show up in the right uniform, like you said. Hey, awesome. Th that's it. Because like if you buy Bitcoin at, at the peak, 69,000, right? And then for some reason, it goes down to, what's that guy's name? Harry Dent, where it goes down to like $3,800 and you buy it at the bottom and along, the, along, along that continuum. As you buy lower and lower, it lowers your cost basis. That's all I got to do. And that's why I'm so keen on uh, liquidation. I'm just like, just liquidate and give me my money back. Because I already learned my lesson to never trust you suckers again. And uh, never use centralized exchanges and leave stuff on there. And then m move from there. And I'll take that funds and I'll invest in what I think is appropriate for me. Not in your stupid new co business that I don't think is going to work. Yeah, uh, Robert, does anyone mention ADA staking, DNews of staking? I forget to mention this. If you guys, first of all, if you have Cardano and you have it in exchange, why do you have it in exchange? I think we talked about this. Uh, put it into cold storage or at least put it into like a Daedalus or ADA Lite wallet or something or NAMI wallet. NAMI is very simple. And if you wanted to stake it, just look for DNews. There's a link in the description. I show you exactly how to do all those things I just talked about. Very simple. Ah, uh, geeky. Uima. Nailed it. Rob, do you think Masterworks is legit? Saw people questioning it. I question it myself. I've invested into it. And then I would see like, you know, like Echoes. He's been on the show. I think Echoes has been on the show. Echoes from above. He started to question it. And people, I've seen people say, it's a scam. It's a scam. And it's because of, and really what it comes down to is they have to, they register everything with the SEC. And in some and some of those documentations, there was some really strange, not strange language, but language which would say, like, look, we are our interests may not align on these paintings. And so what I did was I reached out and I said, look, uh, we got a lot of questions. And I need you guys to come on and explain yourself because people are questioning masterworks. I don't want to be in the same position. So I uh, had the CEO on, Scott. And he gave the answers. So there is actually, I made a playlist that's called Masterworks. And it goes through all those things that we just talked about. And he answers what it is. To me, I always look at Masterworks as like this. is like, it is diversification. And I'm not going to put all my money into Masterworks like how some people would put all their money into uh, Celsius or Voyager, crazy, or FTX or BlockFi. It's a small percentage of my portfolio. I've had subscribers who have put their, their funds into it. The artwork has, and this is the video that we talked about, the artwork has appreciated. They got 37% annualized return and it worked out pretty well. Does that mean you're going to get 37%? No. You could lose money. All these things are super risky. All this stuff is risky. So you just got to take it with a, you know, just... Think if it's best for you. To me, it made sense. 
to you, it might not make sense. And that's it. And remember, they are, they are a sponsor of the show. So remember that. And I clearly labeled sponsor, show sponsor. But I bought a couple art pieces myself. I think it's going to work out for me. Who knows? <laughs> Thank you. Yes. My beard was darker in the bull run. I also had less wrinkles. And I wasn't as red. Uh, let's see. Gary H says, what's your thoughts on AI? Will it lead the next bull run? Kind of like NFTs did. I think, um, I don't think that the, in the, the crypto AI tokens will do anything. I don't understand the point of them, quite honestly. And I know some people will say, well, it's, it's, it's the future. It's the future. I'm like, is it really AI crypto tokens? Or are they just putting, like Singularity might, I don't know. It seems like a, that's, that's been around for quite some time. But I'm, I'm looking at them like, to me, it feels like when the dot-com era was about and these companies had nothing to do with the internet, just put dot-com by their name and their stock went up. I think most of them are scams, honestly. Watch, uh, there's a video by Coinsider and he talks about the same thing I just said. So I don't think, I think AI will be enormous and it's going to change everything drastically. But do I think that the, the crypto market, the crypto AI tokens are le mostly legit? No. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, wow, I felt bad. Five figures. Steven Nipplish, I mean, weather and bear market. Yeah, five figures is, it sucks, but I mean, what are you going to do? You know? I'm above ground. I'm healthy. Wife and family. I live in Puerto Rico. I mean, it's a pretty good deal. What about Cardano Steak and KYC? This is a a potential SIP or improvement protocol that Charles Hoskin was talking about as far as KYC and for, for uh, American stakers. And it isn't even out. It's just, uh, it hasn't even been, even been brought forth as far as be, to be voted on. So right now, to me, I see it as not a security. And that's it. We're just a stake pool operator. Now, if the SEC comes at us and says, well, you were offering, you know, think, first you got to go with all the stake pool operators and go, well, you were offering securities uh, for, your, for your node. I'm like, well, first of all, uh, you know, we're, uh, our stake pool operation isn't even based in the United States. In, uh, it's in Australia and the Netherlands, so or New Zealand. So I mean, okay. And then they say, "Well, you use the uh, American citizens." All right, we'll just settle with them and go from there. Is that going to stop us from being a state pool operator? No, because they don't even know what they're doing either. Nikos, is that a real pool? Nope, this is all green screen. Green screen. It's a dynamic green screen. Sometimes you'll see people walk by or my dog walk in the green screen. Totally fake. Uh, hey, Rob, mods only people. Thank you. Smash the likes. Gary don't care about crypto. They pay the way. Yeah, it's probably a good point. Graph as well. You made a video. All right. <laughs> AI will be filtered to oblivion. <laughs> the video is six doing the bull run. I do like, I do love Danny DeVito, especially in the, it's not always selling in Philadelphia. Ah, celebrity is here, Miss Teen Crypto. Randy. Randy had a good video with, uh, with Crypto Stash. I encourage everybody to take a look at that. Smash the likes. Randy, what I was going to talk to you about when we were talking before is to do like, uh, like on one of these live streams, do like, be like a co-host and like, we'll go over the news and you give me your, your opinion too. I think that's what I should start doing. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. Where is Hashoshi? Hash, Hash is, I talk to him frequently and I haven't paid it, I haven't kept up to date, but Hash had a lot of things on his plate, especially with family. And uh, hopefully he comes back and does crypto over coffee. I used to like those videos. I don't know if he's back yet or not. 
Damn, my eye. Uncle Ricky, are you participating on any DEXs? Yeah. Um, simple swap, Uniswap, tomato coin swap, or whatever uh, it is. Muesli, Sunday swap, those types. But if I really got to get something, if I really need something, I'll just go to, I'll go to sushi and grab it there. Oh my God. News with Beardy. That would be a train, train station calamity. Quiz topics asks, will you jump to the green screen 100K? Yes, I'll rip this green screen down. And I will dynamically jump into a digitalized pool. And that's it. All right, everybody. That's it for today. Look, we went 54 minutes. It's a long time. And uh, I got to get out of here. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. If you like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. And that is it for today. So thanks, everybody. I do appreciate you stopping by and talking with me. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Adios.